is going to go ahead and start a little talking a little bit about like what is social within the analytics and why do we need it. And then uh, at the end part, we are going to present the new reports that are happening. Um, that is actually in beta now. That is going to kind of like prove uh, the ROI of the social activities uh, as they are today for companies. Before you start, Mia, I just wanted to ask a question. How many of you do use analytics today on a daily basis? Okay, that's great. That's like kind of like 50% of the people. And how many of you do have problems understanding the, the impact of social on, on the bottom line? Okay, that's the majority of you as well. Okay, great. So, Mia, you can start yeah. and then I will just go out the corner cool. here and I'll just start you. So, yes, we have talked already introduced ourselves a little bit about who we are. This is what we do and this is why we moved to Sweden to help to help Scandinavia be better at analytics essentially was the vision when we started now. It turned out to be a lot of other things as well, helping companies be better at the entire Google portfolio. We don't really get uh, people still refer to us as the Google girls for some reason, so we just like took the consequence of that and are now helping companies be better at the entire Google product portfolio. So that, of course, includes a lot of work with Google Plus now that that's been rolled out. And you probably heard a lot about that uh, last week, why that is getting more and more important, not just for social reasons, but for a lot of other reasons. Um, the impact of that is uh, definitely, definitely big. And uh, Google is still going strong with a lot of new products in the pipeline, so a lot of new things to, uh, to look out for. Um, we really focus on training and education and coaching for people that are working with it because we believe that analytics is something that you really need to work with uh, yourself in-house. It's something that you need, it's a competence you need to have to measure up everything else that you're working with. Uh, so that's kind of why we are focusing so much on, on teaching people to be better at this. Um, then it's also about putting analytics, it's a lot about putting together a good strategy because Everything is about measuring all the other things that you do. Analytics is about measuring all the other things that you do. And you do social, you, some of you might even do some other types of online marketing as well. And analytics is a thing that kind of like puts everything together and measure everything. And this is why it's all about like putting together the perfect mix, the perfect strategy mix with the different tools that you have. Uh, and that's what we do on a on a day-to-day -day basis, a lot of like trainers, trainers. So why this, is ma why this matters is it's, uh, with, the, with the social tracking and the social analytics is of course that since there's so much happening in the field of, of online marketing and social, this thing about social media intelligence is getting bigger and bigger. You can call it social analytics, social media intelligence, but it's all really kind of an expression of the same thing. To start to think about analytic or social in a much more... Um, uh, return on investment way, where this is something that is not done not just because we think that it's fun or because we will, we need to be there, but it actually matters on the bottom line. And this is all what it's all about. And some of this data is qualitative, so it's obviously a lot of that comes from social. Uh, we use a lot of like qualitative me metrics around like uh, why social matters, but. Social can also be quantifiable, measurable, and this is what you will see today. Um, so it really is about like tracking up everything using the tools, and first and foremost, using people to actually be better at this. And since we are seeing all this increase, we are seeing this exponential growth of new tools. There are so many new tools uh, coming up all the time. It's very difficult to stay on top. Uh, there's more and more professionals uh, working with this. There's more and more social media managers or community managers and so forth working with this. There are tools and people and higher demands because there's getting more and more money in this. That's what we'll talk about in a, in a second. Uh, it really just incre increases the uh, demand for, for analytics. And social is starting to become, and you have all know this, to become a required feature of any company and uh, any online presence. It not just, it's just not an add-on anymore. It's actually being something that you are expected to have some kind of strategy for. So what is happening is, of course, that since this uh, exponential growth of, uh, of attention is going towards social, it's also that the people that are working in the marketing industry are starting to focus their money on, um, on social media. And it's that to see that 
uh, this is where the money will, will go in terms of uh, more and more investment of the magazine money. We all have our budgets. We all have budgets where we are restricted by or we can spend some, some, uh, some of it on, on social and so forth. And we all want to have like, a bigger chunk of, of budget to spend. Uh, but the interesting thing is like social media is really scoring higher and higher in terms of what people are expecting to invest in moving forward. Yeah. It also shows that the impact of, uh, of social media is pretty big. Um, so as a, as a marketing channel, it's really, really performing uh, really, really well. And these are like relative uh, fresh numbers for 2011. So it really is starting to become like a marketing cash cow for the industry. More and more people will invest more money moving forward. So this is becoming a more and more important from a macro perspective, uh, more important area. Maybe you should take those numbers because I don't think the people in the back actually sure. sees them. <laughs> so the first one is like social media uh, down here is on, on the, the biggest one is on 59% and social media comes in free here as the strongest performing uh, magazine channel uh, last year on 28%. But we can, uh, you will be able to see the numbers on the presentation. So what this, is, what this means is that people will start to ask, managers will start to ask, what am I getting back for my money? Because it's all about showing internally or externally showing the impact. And especially in the times with recession and with limited budget and in a time where social media still have to prove that it has something to, to contribute with because we're all in that situation internally or, or externally to prove that this matters. Um, then the, the question that it all comes back to is like, how do I measure the effect of my social media efforts? Because we need to measure it. Uh, there is no way around with the, with the development of social media because there's so much more money coming into this field. So we just have to be able to prove the impact. And it's just not good enough to say like, well, we have like this many likes. We really need to have better metrics for, for measuring the impact from a more holistic view. Um, and this is where analytics comes into the place. And uh, there's a lot of really, really interesting things going on uh, with the product of Google Analytics. And I think you'll get really excited when you see some of the new features. So Google Analytics is, uh, is, is really the answer to many of these questions uh, that you might have been asking yourself uh, in the past. So. I'll hand it over to the product specialist. <laughs> Thank you. All right, let me see if I can get this. Okay, so can everybody see me and can everybody hear me? You know, okay, excellent. Thank you. So, so basically what we have kind of like taken in uh, the whole theme of today is it, it, it's kind of like inspired from, uh, from, from the biggest boss uh, from Saatchi and Saatchi who just came out with an article saying like, you know, return on ROI is no longer return on investment, but it's actually something that we have to measure is the return on the involvement. Everything that has to do, you know, when, you, when it actually comes to pulling in a lot of marketing budgets to different, different kind of channels, previously it was, okay, yeah, you know, it, it gave us so much sales. Everything is about sales and will be about the sales, but how do we get to those sales is actually going to be um, measured through the involvement that we are going to have with the, with the social outside of our company. So, um, things that I'm going to show you today is still in beta. So, uh, I would appreciate like if you want to come with any comments and if you have any questions around, you know, I don't understand this, uh, how this uh, number works, what is this, etc., etc. So, let me go ahead and show you the uh, how the f how actually analytics and how. Uh, within the within the analytics team in Google, how do they think about the social and what is the first the reason for and the, the reason behind why do you have uh, what 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 is it actually needed to uh, to, to prove the, the social aspect of it? So the first and foremost, it was you know right now as Mia mentioned, everything comes down to you know okay how many likes and how many f fans do I have, how many followers do I have. But the thing is that a lot of uh, CEOs are asking about, okay, so what is the business outcome that I'm going to have out of this? How can I prove that every single like is actually bringing in me the money? So it's essentially saying, show me the money. That is what we're needing today. Um, the other thing is like, how do my social visitors on the site, how do they actually interact with my website? Does the more social visitors that are coming to my site stay longer? 
Are they interested in different content? What kind of information are they consuming? And what is actually the funnel uh, to the conversion when it comes to socially engaged visitors compared to those that are not? That is a question that has been very, very difficult to answer. Then another thing is like, okay, how do you connect the dots? So within uh, a customer, before they actually become a customer, they are actually a prospect, so which means that they are a prospect, they are maybe going from a totally cold lead to a form lead to actually being a prospect and then converting, which means that within the process that we actually get a sale, there will be this process within the consumer that they actually have to go through in order to be, feel safe enough to actually buy the product itself. So how do I connect the dots between when a customer actually searches on Google to actually going into my Facebook page, maybe liking me, or then showing um, or, or looking at the banner somewhere on a display network, and then going back to my site and buying. So how can I actually prove the like that has come from the original Google search that they did? So what is the, the channels, what is the funnel through that conversion when it comes to the different marketing channels? This is something that we call multi-channels, uh, multi-channels analysis, basically, uh, within the analytics world. And then, <clears throat> to tie to social activities and, uh, and referrals, we really have to have some kind of economic value of it. We know, and I mean, like, you are the experts when it comes to the social media. Social media is so strong, and it's, it has hit the companies so hard right now that they are, like, kind of, like, sitting there and saying, oh, this just had kind of, like, happened and I don't actually know how to deal with it. We know that the, we have to be there, but we don't know how. And at the same time, it's like they have it, they have it in the backbone that social doesn't actually provide any economic value out of it at all. It's like being social is like it doesn't give me direct sales, therefore I'm not going to invest in it. But I know that a lot of it is happening out there, but you have to again show me the money in order for me to put in more resources on it. So this is kind of like those four points where actually within the Google and within the engineers and, and the whole team, uh, they've put their heads together and said like, you know, we have to do something about this. And also when it comes to Google Plus and how much Google Plus is going to have the impact on the whole search and on the com consumer, obviously this is going to be the highest priority right now. So basically when it comes to uh, the report, so this is... This is one of the newest reports that, are, that, that is just now in beta. So what is going to happen is that um, when a customer has a goal, which means what is a goal of my website? And I want to ask you, how many of you actually ask your clients, what is the goal of your website? One, two, three, yeah. four, five. Okay. <laughs> okay, so that's kind of like the 10%. Um, it is actually super crucial to ask your customers what is the point of your website? What do you want the consumers that come to your website, what do you want them to do? Do, they, do you want them to convert? Okay, yeah, you want more money, but how and why? Is there any other, other things around your website that, it, that can actually be measured as well? So this is something that also like within the analytics world, everything comes down to you know, what is the purpose of your website? which again is translated into goals uh, within the analytics tool and this is how we can start putting the numbers and monetary values to the goals of the website that consumers actually perform. So what this slide show or the slide is showing is basically once you have your, um, your conversions it's going to be represented by the full circle. I hope that you see it's like a huge circle around here that is saying, you know, this is 121 conversions that have been done by your website in the period chosen within the analytics tool. But then what it's going to do is actually it's going to say to you that the, the circle that is here, it's not shown right now, but the circle that says here is, is like 19 conversions have actually been the last interaction with the customer. So what this means is that the social network has actually been given the, uh, the honor of being the network um, and the source that has contributed to the, to the conversion. Okay, so this is the last conversion uh, source that, that, that these customers have been to. But then what is going to actually show you as well is that bigger blue circle 
but it's actually saying, um, okay, so you got 19 conversions that have been that, that have been the, the last interaction with uh, with the consumer, but then the bigger one is saying, well, the social also assisted other sources to come up with this conversion, which means that the social has not been the last interaction that customer has been has been doing before converting, but it has been assisting these other conversions, these other sources over to the conversion. Okay, does that make sense? Because this is kind of important to understand. Not? No, you don't understand. Okay, great. What is, um, what, what is happening basically is that once a customer, so think about yourself, when you want to go to holidays in Thailand, what happens is that you don't know maybe where you want to go, you don't know what kind of hotel do you want to do you want to book, you don't know what kind of airline are you actually going to uh, to book the flight with. So what you start with actually um, you search search before your conversion to to, to, the, to booking the trip to Thailand. What you start to do is like you start to search on very generic words like Thailand uh, semester or something like that. So what happens then is that you know through your consumer process before you book the hotel, you will be the you will be searching for information that will going to make you comfortable enough to do the conversion. So after you perform your search, what you do? Okay, now I know like three different places that I can go to Thailand. I know these three hotels. Okay, fine. I'm done with my search today. What happens is that tomorrow I actually go to Expressen and I see a great banner that says, oh, this is a trip to Phuket, uh, book now, it's only 8,000 kronas. And then you, oh yeah, I have to book my trip. Then you click on that banner, and then this is your second interaction with the same, perhaps, company that you already had. So in this process, before you even book through that banner, what you might do is that you can go to Facebook's fan page of this particular hotel, and then you can like the page. So right now you've had three interactions, okay, with different media, um, different marketing sources. So the first one was the search, the second one was the banner, and then the, the third one was the fan page. Okay, in analytics you can actually now see the full search, uh, the, well, the, the full three uh, sources and how do they actually interact with each other. Yes. Uh, as it has been in the past, uh, social media has been part of the referral uh, source. Is it now a, 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 its own source besides referral? Because referral is all other linking. Yeah, stuff. it's actually <laughs> coming on. Yeah, I mean, like it comes up as a referral still, okay. but it's actually having its own its own set of reports. So, so everything it has to do with social, it has its own set of reports. It's just like separately from all traffic sources that it used to be before. Yeah. Um, okay, so so what this this circle here, the blue one, is going to say to you is that, you know, I now converted with the Facebook page and I booked the hotel, but that is the last that is the last interaction that I had with this booking company. Um, however, and then it, that is going to be part of the last interaction sources. Okay, what is going to be displayed here in the in the big blue circle is actually how many times have I been in contact with the social um, networks when it actually before I've actually converted. Yes. Is that um, paid uh, advertising on on Facebook, for instance? So could it be just the fan page? Can can you separate the ones that you actually pay for to to Facebook or the yeah. company page? I mean, it's up to you because like within within analytics right now, when it comes to from for Facebook is normally organic because they can't automatically track which one it is but you can modify that to actually be for the paid as well so you can you can have your own social tags that are going to say you know like treat this as paid yeah. however um, then it's yeah automatically. no it's not automatically and that is kind of like you know it, it, it's a tricky part where analytics only takes in paid uh, from automatically from AdWords. If you have any other sources like the ba banner on Expressen and you don't run the campaigns through AdWords, it's going to have a difficulty of, of knowing that basically. So you have to go and like, separately tag that in order to do it. Because obviously like Yahoo doesn't want to share um, 
data with analytics, uh, analytics data from Yahoo advertising, for example, and neither does Facebook. I mean, there, there are different things that you can do around that. You can also play around with APIs, for example, where you can create your own dashboard so you have like everything at the same uh, instead of going through those different tools. But I mean, it's, uh, it's definitely possible, but not automatic. Kind of but a lot of the power of analytics, I think, and this is where uh, usually where we see a lot of people working with analytics, they just, they just do the basic implementation and don't configure it in the right way. And like analytics is a great starter tool if you just uh, implement the normal tracking code. But in order to really get the most out of it, there are like a need for configurations of analytics to um, uh, like, uh, an unlimited extent. You can do uh, as much as you can. Uh, another kind of like uh, analogy around this uh, multi-channel is the whole thinking about like conversions, seeing conversions as, uh, as uh, scoring a goal in a, in a football match where social might not always be Slatan, but you never buy like a full football team only with Slatan. You still have people that need to play the ball forward to Slatan yeah. in order for him to score the goal. And this is what this is illustrating. Has social been on the team of the winning team that scored a lot of goals? Yeah, that's a great analogy. Yeah, and if you if you have if you still have some questions around what does last conversion play uh, versus assisted conversion play mean, like hey, just come to me afterwards so we can have a chat around that. Um, all right. So what this report is kind of like showing you is the impact of where the social come in when it comes to conversion. So the one part is you know being the last uh, driven conversion type. The second one is where it's actually assisting a conversion to happen. Um, within the risk report, obviously you will be able to see like what kind of uh, what kind of networks have dri has, has driven the traffic to you. So in this case, and this is taken from May and Barrow account, uh, our website, uh, we have a lot of interactions through Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. And here we're also able to see like number of visits and what kind of like what kind of within these visits, where is the network, which network is the strongest. Then again, like when you want to actually go in and see. What kind of URLs have people shared with others uh, that, that is that related to your domain? You can also see that. So basically, like here, we also see that you know most of the times the shared URL that has been related to our domain is actually the homepage. But then you, again, we also see that some people have also shared the media coverage site as well. So this is the type of things that when you actually you know work with your client, you get you could say. You know, we have a promotion for this particular campaign. I can actually see that this has been so many shares of these kind of URLs um, throughout this period of time. Okay. I think it's actually, there's a question. Yes. Yeah, uh, which uh, social networks are, are supported? Is it Google that are defining what? Because we have regional and local, like Tosha, for instance, is a Swedish yeah. social network that's not so big in the US, I guess. I guess they are taking like the biggest ones that is there um, right now. I'm. Um, I mean, the best way of doing it is actually going to the report and checking it out if if it is there. Uh, I know particularly in, in in things such as like if there if there is like a, a search engine that it, that is not recognized as a search engine, you can tell the Google Analytics like to treat this as a search engine. Um, I'm not sure if you're actually able to do that with social, but that's something I can I can look it up uh, look it up for you as well, and then like do some kind of like yeah, manual implementation of just saying to analytics treat this source as a social instead of like referral, for example. Um, okay, so so within the same report, what we are actually able to see is that the different companies will have different goals. Okay, so in terms of our uh, our part, what we have as a goal for our website, I mean, obviously we don't sell anything, and there is a lot of customers saying basically, you know, but we don't sell anything, we don't have any goals, you know, and it's like, yes, you do, you have a lot of goals, you have a goal with your website, we just have to like find out what it is and how those goals actually relate to your bottom line. So for ourselves, like what is very important is basically when somebody fills out a contact us form. I mean that is like a, 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 a straight lead generation that can be converted over to some kind of like a customer or some kind of business. The second goal that we have is actually measuring the engagement of the website, which means in this part that we, we see that a, a special visitor actually consumes more than four pages on the site and our site is like six pages, that is a highly engaged customer. So that is also a, very, a, a true goal for us, which means that before the customer maybe goes in 
and fills up that form, it's going to be a very warm lead that has been reading a lot about on our page, which means that if they consume more than 80% of the, of the pages that we have on our site, that's a highly engaged customer. So that is a goal as well that would be recorded in analytics for our site. Then another goal that we have is if somebody goes um, and actually reads about the, the training and the services that we provide. So actually just hitting a page where the training and services are described on our page is also a, a good goal for us because what we want is obviously that we want to promote this through our products and the services that we do. And this is like the two last ones, um, or actually the three last ones, because the third one is also an engagement goal, which is staying on a website more than three minutes. Because if you have a page that's only like six pages, three minutes is a lot. So for us, it's again like uh, measuring these micro conversions towards a macro conversion, which is contacting us. Okay? And through this, we can actually like select the different goals and we can actually see what kind of goals have been reached through the social media and through the different networks. So once you click on one of these, the whole report will go and change compared to this, uh, compared to this goal. Question, yes? Um, you can, if you set up, con <coughs> you, say, you say you set up one goal being contacting you through the website, can you set up a goal contacting you through the Facebook page or through Twitter or any other social channels? Yeah, and it's a very, very good question. So, so the thing is that once, I mean, it's very, it's, it, it, it is possible to get like analytics code on your Facebook page. Um, however, it, I haven't had the greatest experience with it. So what can happen is basically what you can do is you can say, if there is a goal that is, that is completed on Facebook, it would be difficult to get that in, uh, like automatically into analytics. But what you can see is that, obviously as this report is saying, the, the traffic from analytics is doing the goals on your website. So everything is kind of like your website <coughs> oriented, unless you, you have the ability to put the code on, on those other pages, basically. Elaborate on that. What do you mean by difficult? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, difficult. So, I mean, uh, it is. I mean, Facebook has an API. So, if you have a good developers that can help you, like extract the API, you are still able to do that. So, that is the difficulty part of it. And then, and it is possible to have the analytics goal on, on the pages as far as unless they have changed it like for the last month. But it is, uh, it is possible to do it. I mean, I have personally not had the greatest experience um, with that because now. Uh, I mean, Facebook has also come out with a, with a great uh, uh, data analysis tools there as well. Um, what I think is more interesting, instead of like setting up the goals itself on the Facebook, I think it's interesting to extract that data, like you know, the post frequency and the post, uh, like how much impact do you have with your people. Um, extract that and combine that together with analytics. I think that's much more interesting to look at. Uh, because that data is obviously not possible in, in analytics. Yes, please. Is there any way to extract the data from Facebook Insights and push it into analytics? Yeah, exactly. Analytics? Yes. It's not, you're not able to push it into analytics, but you're able to push it to, uh, to, to a dashboard that you yeah. will have, which is a third party, kind of like uh, your own built dashboard. Okay. So that's possible. That's definitely possible to do. Uh, and then in that analytics or a third party product? Uh, it doesn't have to be a third party product, but it has to be something that's custom built for yourself. Okay. So for example, you can have a Drupal website uh -huh. and you can just feed that data both from analytics API and also a Facebook API and you can just like merge that data together. Or Gecko board. Oh, Gecko board. <laughs> exactly. All right. Um, okay, let's move on. Um, so basically, there's a lot of information here, and I, I wish I had a board here which I could kind of like explain this analogy with Zlatan and like the rest of the team uh, playing together with Zlatan to score. So what this actually means is that it is super, super important that when you want to prove, you know, the, the investment that you have done both through resources and, and monetary-wise to different clients and customers, it is super important to say, you know, I didn't have only this much likes, but uh, the Facebook visits have assisted the conversions that you have on your website with this much, okay? So what this is saying is that uh, Facebook, which is number two here, 
has actually so this number is kind of like calculated between the where, where Facebook has been the last conversion towards where Facebook has been assisting conversion. Essentially, what this means is that where Facebook has been Zlatan and where Facebook has been the rest of the team. Okay, so what it does is that it kind of like calculates the difference between that, and the higher the number is towards one, the this particular source has been more assisting towards a conversion than actually converting. Okay, so this is kind of like the number that you just have to like look at. So you, you can, it, it is very easy, You're just taking basically the assisting amount of conversion, which is 81, dividing that by 70, and you would get 115. Okay. Um, so this is kind of like so this is more how should I say this is this data is very very valuable and there is a lot to learn from here when it actually comes to analysis of the whole data. So what I'm showing you today is basically it can be a bit heavy uh, and it's maybe not that sexy, but for an analytical guy and if you really love the numbers, this data is like you know the dream coming true. Well, get, when, getting a date will be called Kidman or something. When does the, the beta release? Um, it's actually not, uh, I mean, if you sign up for beta, you're able to get it. So you mm -hmm. can just go to a blogger, uh, the, the, the official page of Google, and you can just like try to sign up, and they will sign up your uh, name for it. Yeah. Uh, all right, so another thing is like the social visitor flow. And the flow, basically, what it does is uh, for you, for those of you who have seen the visitor flow in general, what it does is kind of like it patterns in your um, uh, your visitors, uh, how do they actually interact with your website. So basically what it says is that for Facebook, uh, so many people had the starting page, then the first interaction was about us page, then the second interaction was about us again, but this is more like from the media reference, they go here, so then they go to contact, and then from here, they maybe go to, to media references, and they go to services again. So in here, there is like three interactions within your customers, and you can actually see that within the flow of the, of the, actual, um, of the actual social network itself. And you can do the same thing with LinkedIn and Twitter, and you can you can change around and you can play around and actually see. So, so for example, you might notice that from LinkedIn, people are more tending to, you know, go to the red part, which is kind of like exiting your page. So this is kind of like uh, the different uh, the comparison of the different sources that you might have in your network. I mean, this is only from our account because like. All our clients' account is very confidential, so I can't show you like you know the real case example. Uh, but I mean, this is real case example is just from our website, so we don't have that much you know sexy uh, sources as you see. I mean, I can yes. have a question. If if you have a, a e-commerce website like oh, there with a lot of products, can you still sort of see the flow from Facebook and perhaps to a campaign page? Uh, and then through yeah. that I buy like yeah, 10 exactly. different tests. Yeah, there's no problem with that. There's no problem with that. I mean, as long as you have the analytics code on it and it's correctly implemented, you know, you just hit the report and it's there. And this report is already available um, for for the different, um, for visitor flow, basically. This one is just like particular, so you can you can see the social network. Can you see itself. also the, the, I mean, how do you tag, for instance, monetary value? Mm -hmm. Uh, Without actually having an e-commerce. No, but but if you have a, a e-commerce e and and you have socks for ten crowns and then you have a pair for one hundred and fifty crowns, can you sort of see the result in the end? In the end, I mean, yeah, um, it, it is kind of like where you where you see the value itself would be if you set up a goal, which is basically you know hit e-commerce page, thank you page. Uh, and then you can set up a separate one that is actually saying, you know, when you buy socks, it's going to be a goal. Basically, okay, you but can you can't that. put it in, in uh, actually the sum that, that the customer bought. I'm not sure if I understand your question. Well, if, if I, I see a, a Facebook ad mm -hmm. or a, a blog post or something, and I go to my site, mm -hmm. and I, it turns out I buy 10 different pairs of, of mm -hmm. stocks, socks, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, to a total value of say 450 crowns, mm -hmm. can I see that monetary value 
In analytics? Yeah. Yeah, 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 of course. If you have e-commerce, yeah. if you have e-commerce uh, connected yeah. to analytics, yeah. there's no problem with that. Yeah. There because is no then problem. you can really count. Yeah, exactly. You count the money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is exactly what you do. Mm -hmm. I mean, like for e-commerce websites, if you have e-commerce uh, connected to it and you're already tracking income and your products and transactions that you're doing, it's a no-brainer. I mean, it, it comes in automatically. It's kind of like worse for websites that don't sell anything. Mm -hmm. Then it's like, how do you find a monetary value? value of somebody actually uh, putting through a contact us page and normally and generally what we recommend is like you know you, it doesn't have to be the exact numbers find an average something that just means something to you it doesn't even have to be money it can be time because time is money so as long as the number actually means something to you put in a one or a ten or a hundred it doesn't matter like analytics doesn't understand like what is the value of this number, it's just generating and plussing it up so you can, you know, analyze it and get some business sections out of it. So that's basically how it works. Um, so, yes, we've been here, we go back. Okay, so what I wanted to show you is kind of like this icon here, which is, uh, is kind of like very, very juicy part. With, for Google Plus and, um, and Blogger, there is um, uh, an icon that is going to present something that's called uh, the, social, uh, the social media hub. So basically, have you heard of that? No, okay. So I, I don't know too much about it, to be honest, but what it does is basically it's kind of like a hub of networks that want to share and integrate their data um, with analytics. Okay, so what it does is basically when you when you see uh, you can maybe look it up social uh, the social data hub partners. So all the networks that are uh, sorry I will go back uh, all the networks that are within the uh, the social data hub are actually you know sharing the data with analytics. So in this in this part is like Google Plus and bloggers. Obviously Google is uh, Google is there. Um, and they have like around 60 networks right now that is actually sharing this data, so it actually is going to feed in into analytics. So, so the um, the important part here is kind of like when you start to see um, the the URLs that again have been shared from your from your website. But then the the other part, which is very very interesting, is when you actually start to see the conversations that you have had with what kind of influencers uh, from the networks itself. So basically what this report is saying, you know, number two here, there is um, Aditya Manon uh, saying, be magnificent at knowing what to ignore, and then plus Avinash, who is, uh, who is this uh, website to write up, la la la, keynoting route, etc., etc. So, so, so through this, you can actually see the post that has, that has been posted and the URL uh, or the, the profile of the people who have actually posted this. So through this, um, and this is taken from the Google Plus, you can actually see who are your biggest influencers on the network. Yes? I imagine that you can't see it on Facebook. No surprise. Not yet. We're kind of like trying to push them in, like saying, you know, you have to be within social uh, social data hub. But yeah, that's still to come. Yes, please. Uh, isn't it possible to uh, like uh, use data from cloud or peer index or uh, those sources that aggregate influence uh, in analytics and feed into analytics? Yeah. Yeah, possibly. I mean, it's not automatic. But again, if you want to do that, you can you can create something for yourself. Yeah. Um, but I think like this network is going to grow and grow, and obviously like the uh, like, the, the, mo the majority you know are interested in Twitter and Facebook and stuff like that. So hopefully that will like I think they are working on it. Uh, but obviously like there's nobody nobody knows how how that is going to end. And um, and as you have heard already last week, you know Google Plus is going to be so huge, and Google Plus is so so much more than just a social network. So it's kind of like when it comes to uh, when it comes to whole part of analysis, and particularly when it comes to like feeding in into the SEO and feeding in into adverts and etc. etc. Google Plus will have like a major impact. So um, so that is kind of like why this, the whole big full push when it comes to you know that uh, what we are looking at going forward is basically you know 
measuring the involvement, and this is kind of like what this report is given to. I think also there is one important uh, issue around this is looking at the existing social media tracking tools that you might be working with already. They will never go in and measure uh, the effect of your actual website. They will just interact, like measure the interaction in the social media. <coughs> and what the, the industry is missing is a link connecting the transactions that are happening on your website with everything else that is happening outside of it. And this is like the, for now, the best uh, possible suggestion on this, and there is no one, I mean Facebook would never be able to access your transactional information on your individual website, because why would you give that out? It's super, super highly confidential information that you have their business crucial information. Um, so there is like some high level negotiation going on, of course, to somehow merge these two worlds, because that connection is what is going to take social media to the next level of actually measuring the, the actual return on investment and not just what is going out there outside of it. Mm. Yeah, good point. Do you have any questions? Come here, Lou. <laughs> They're terrified, I think. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I mean, like, it, it is kind of like a mouthful to take this on. I, I, I assume that, I mean, like, the, the people that we are working with, even, uh, even the, the, the highest, uh, the good specialists, you know, they still have to, like, go through this, like, a couple of times. Um, I think like, for, for everyone, I would definitely recommend, you know, if you have a client that has analytics, try to encourage them to, you know, to use more of it, and particularly like this kind of data, I mean like it will ease up your job just basically saying, you know, you have to like do this because this is going to be important, and now you can actually measure it. Yes? Yeah, yeah. I want to try this out, just sit down and play with it. Uh, where would you recommend starting? See, I just want to spend a few hours just, you know, the analytics. Get, no, this, the, the social part. The social part. Yeah. I mean, there is blogs out there, uh, and there's a lot of information, just Google it, and it's like, you know, there's also a, a blog within analytics, uh, analytics blog that is, that's come up and explaining, explaining this, so that's the best way of, this is the best way of starting with it. <laughs> Well, yes. this, if I have the basic installation of the Google Analytics script and uh, I'm notified any goals yet, what do I have to do to get these reports when you release them? I don't want to but once you need to have the social uh, social tagging for it. So you have to you have to have the social tagging in order for it to work. And what so, is the social tagging? So the social tagging, it's kind of like it's, it's a small tag that you have to apply for every single um, Facebook uh, Facebook link or Facebook like on your page. Okay, so, so it's not that's automatic. It. No, for Google Plus it is, but for all other ones it's not. Any yeah. other um, We discussed on uh, when we were eating lunch that I, I referred to an article by Svenska Dagblad that last June, which said that only half of the 100 companies on the Swedish stock exchange, or Stockholm stock exchange, actually track their marketing at all. Uh, and and uh, I think that a lot of people say that, well, you know, social media, what use is it, we can't measure it. And I think this is a really good answer to what value does it give us, and what does it convert to, and how we can measure it, and especially, I think, compared to traditional media, because if you don't measure the traditional media, it's very hard to say that, oh, we only have like 3,000 likes on our Facebook page. Well, you don't track it in traditional media, so you don't really know how people react to your ads, especially if they're not just like image ads and, and don't have coupons or good ways of tracking sales, which a lot actually don't. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I think like we are really moving into like the, the world of data. I mean, like there's so much data going to be available for us, and with all the technology that's out there, like and all the all, all the different insights that we can get. I mean, like what we see is is really the knowledge is the key. So the knowledge of actually knowing how does businesses work, uh, what is important for them, and also like applying that throughout the different the, both the, within the marketing and also. Helping helping companies like develop their products, like being on top of actually, you know, the new new digital world that is happening upon them. Because normally they need help. It's it's very very difficult uh, to grasp all of this. I mean, it's difficult to be on top 
for even specialists, but then you have a, a customer or a business that is like they have everything else to fix, and now they have to like put their heads together. And it's like Google Plus. Uh, <laughs> Okay, no, no, no more social media. I'm already on the, yeah, uh, yeah. what do they call it, link in, the link dead uh, yeah. or something like that. I can't even pronounce it. So, so it's a, it's a huge revelation that it, that is happening and that it is like particular in Sweden and also like something that we talked about just over lunch. You know, why did we actually choose you know a Norwegian and a Dane in in Sweden? I mean, why do you come here? Um, and you don't even speak the language. <laughs> So, and I think like within Sweden, within the, those, those other Nordic countries, I think Sweden is, I know for a fact that Sweden is one of the, is the leading, leading online, the, the digital, uh, digital performer. So people are easy, taking into consideration like how difficult it is to get within everything. Uh, Sweden is the country where people actually take, uh, take things much, much easier compared to the other compared to other countries, particularly when it comes to the digital. And also like, you know, the infrastructure that we have here and, and the market that we have here, it is actually uh, uh, a lot of positive, uh, positive feedback when it comes to digital. People do want to learn. But I think that the most important thing, this final remark, I know that it's, uh, it's getting there. We're in camera. <laughs> <laughs> so, and in spotlight. Uh, I think the, the most important thing is to take this tool, because it's just a tool, and then start creating those business cases, because it's all about creating the business case. We can like transform the entire industry and how like we are tracking offline if we're not really in charge of that. But at least take the stuff that you're working with and prove how much money that has brought in, so you can justify you know, the budget, your own headcount, and so forth, and to start creating those business cases. And that's the difficult part because this is just a tool, this is the foundation that you build the business case upon. It's very difficult to build business cases if you don't have this in place, but the difficult part and the really giving part is the business cases. So I think we give a big hand to Mia and Anina. is the 25th of May and then I'm actually going to speak for once uh, together, with <laughs> together with Matthias Östmar and we're going to talk about our disruptive leap model so if you're interested in why companies don't grasp digital you should come and why your uh, bosses are being boneheaded then you should come and why your company is in chaos then you should also come <laughs> uh, it's not as heavy and hard as it sounds, and we're going to talk about personal development as well. And then I also want to say that the 26th and 27th, uh, there is a Geek Girl Meetup, and there is 15 tickets left, I've heard, about. So if you want to go and meet some good, cool geek girls, um, it's in a few weeks uh, at geekgirlmeetup.com. And you need to be female, actually. <laughs> so have a great weekend. Like one. Yeah. Yeah. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.